Well, hi, you guys. Welcome back to the Needy Homesteader, and I apologize if I'm lispy, and I know I went MIA for a little bit, but I had an unexpected, unplanned surgery <laughs> last one. It was a minor one, but it still required some healing time, and um, I am now in the process of being restored here with my mouth so i'm sorry if i sound a little extra lispy in this video i no longer have my healing caps in i now have my actual implants and they're kind of i won't say they're they're sharp but, but they're not as smooth as the other one so i'm being careful not to shred my tongue <laughs> So today i am making potato soup most of the country is facing this big storm. I think ours is supposed to turn from rain to snow. And so I thought today would be a perfect day to um, make potato soup for dinner. And I don't think I have a video on potato soup. So I thought, okay, you guys wanna hang out with me in the kitchen? So I'm gonna make potato soup. I'm gonna serve it with some cheeseburger uh, sliders. Um, uh, just using ground beef um, and uh, just a super simple but kind of a comforting hearty uh, dinner on this really cold rainy night so um, I'm going to take you over to my stove and uh, we'll okay, get started. So right off the bat I am cooking up some bacon and all I did to the bacon was I just this is a pound and a half it's a little more than um, the recipe calls for, I'm using a Betty Crocker recipe because I love Betty Crocker. It was the first cookbook I ever got from my mom for my uh, bridal registry when I when I got married. And uh, way back in, oh, when did I get married? 1994. So, um, so this is just a pound and a half of bacon that I just sliced up. Um, not big slices, you know, so I just slice it. And... Throw it in a, I have it in um, one of my chicken fryers, and so I'm just going to brown this up. And then we're going to drain um, a lot of this uh, fat, but we're going to reserve some because I want to cook the onions and garlic in it. So um, I want to cook this up first. So go ahead and throw in, the recipe I think calls for a pound, but um, I usually put a pound um, in, the, in the actual soup and uh, reserve a half a pound to top it off because everybody likes the bacon. So um, let's let this cook up and then we will remove it and uh, drain it on a paper plate with some uh, paper. Now, powder. right before, as this is finishing cooking up, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to add ham. And this is the reason why I'm making potato soup tonight is I had some ham left over from Easter that I needed to use up. I used a lot of it up um, in omelets, um, but I thought, you know what, I'm gonna add it to a potato soup. It would be really delicious. So I, this is already cooked. I'm basically just kind of heating it up and browning it a little bit so it doesn't go into my soup completely cold from the fridge. And I'm just going to let that cook for probably like two minutes and then we'll get it out of there. Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and just scoop this out and put it on a paper towel. Okay, and now it says to use about two tablespoons of um, bacon drippings. And now we're going to add our onions and I'll leave a link. <laughs> To this recipe for you down below okay <laughs> it's gonna get crazy okay. in this as these onions are now softening up I don't ever follow a recipe <laughs> it's really hard for me I cook with love so I'm gonna add a tablespoon of garlic to this because I like it with garlic so I wait so that I don't burn the garlic. I wait till near the end. And these onions are just about ready. In fact, I can turn off the heat. And then what I'm going to do, I'll let that, let the garlic cook up there. And then I'm going to take you over to the other side of my stove and we're going to 
kind of put all this together. Okay. Now, over here in my skillet, which I kind of got to get on the burner. Let me scooch back a little. We are going to go ahead and we are going to add these onions right to my pot. The onions and the garlic, I should say. But just onions if you don't want garlic. You don't have to have a garlic if you don't want to. Okay, and then to this, we're going to be adding two pounds is what the recipe calls for of baking potatoes. What I do is I use my kitchen scale. I weigh out three pounds before I uh, chop them, before I peel them and chop them. And then I figure between all the skins and the bad parts, eh, you might be around two, two and a half pounds, uh, give or take. Uh, for my family, they don't mind the extra potatoes. <laughs> so... Um, I use eh, uh, around three pounds. Uh, if you don't have a scale, think like five or six um, of your baking potatoes. And then you're also going to need six cups of chicken stock. Um, if you're buying it in a container, you're going to need two containers uh, because you're going to need a container and a half. Um, or uh, if you're doing quarts, you're going to need a quart and a pint. And then what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and turn this on and we're going to bring this up to a boil. It's at this point I just like to go ahead and add my um, seasonings. So to this we're going to add a teaspoon of salt and I've got a Mediterranean sea salt I'm using. We're going to do a teaspoon of pepper and I just eyeball it. I like to add a teaspoon of granulated onion and I also like to add a teaspoon of granulated garlic and then about a tablespoon well maybe two because <laughs> I like chives I like to throw some chives in there so, we're going to go ahead and just stir this up, bring it to a boil. And then when it comes to a boil, we're going to reduce the heat on it and we're just going to let it cook for about 10 minutes, 10, 12, 15 minutes, however long it takes for your um, potatoes to become tender. Um, I chop my potatoes, again, s on the smaller side. Um, you know, this is a soup, so for me, I don't want big chunks that won't fit on a spoon. Um, I do make some smaller than others, <laughs> so that, you know, you might have a, a little larger potato that you can kind of, you know, spoon into. Because <laughs> that's part of the fun of eating soup, I think. Um, and then the littler potatoes just add to the thickness to this so um all right now that i've got that all the seasonings incorporated here i'm just going to leave that be and let that come up to a boil i got it on medium heat okay and here we are at a boil so from here i'm gonna set this down on low and now i'm just gonna let this simmer and cook until these potatoes are nice and tender okay and in the meantime i'm going to bring you over back to the other side of my stove where we're going to use that same pan dirty and all you don't have to clean it this this is a really easy meal uh, to make um but we're going to make a roux over there so all right let me fly you across the kitchen okay. and so while our soup is simmering i'm going to turn this back on to about a medium, medium low heat. Hopefully you guys can see that. And as you can see, I still have the little bit of onion residue in there. It's fine. Um, we're gonna go ahead and add butter to this. It calls for two thirds cup of butter. If you're um, in the US and you're using the sticks, the measured out sticks, I just use 11 tablespoons. So, just throw that in there and then um, let that heat up and melt. 
<laughs> okay, once we get this melted up here, we're gonna go ahead and add three quarters of a cup of all-purpose flour. I'm gonna just use a quarter cup measuring. Grab a leveler here. And that way I can kind of sprinkle it in. I don't want to throw it all in at once. I like to do a little bit at a time, get it whisked in there. Okay. Super easy, and when you do it this way too, you don't get any lumps. It's a little easier to control that. And then, and as you can see the bubbles there, that is the flour cooking. And so you wanna let this cook for a minute or two. You'll know when it's cooked. Make sure your heat isn't too high so you don't burn your butter. I don't know why. <laughs> for the people who've never made this the people that you know you've made this before you know uh, but if you've never made this before you will smell it it will start smelling really nutty and just wonderful so get that all whisked in work out any lumps you might see and then I'm going to go ahead and grab my okay. And once that's smelling really good, it's like a buttery, nutty smell. Oh, it smells so good. And you want to make sure you cook your flour. Otherwise, your soup will taste like raw flour. It'll taste like paste, and that will be not enjoyable. <laughs> now, this recipe calls for four cups of milk. We're going to be adding two cups into our roux here okay we're gonna go ahead and again I don't just dump everything in I add a little bit at a time And this is going to be our thickener for our potato soup, okay? Okay, remove that from the heat. And when our soup is ready, our, our potatoes are tender, we will add this to our soup. Our potatoes are fork tender. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to add this roux in here. Little bits at a time. And I'm going to whisk, whisk it in here.
all of our roux in there now. So now we're just going to whisk until I get that nice and incorporated. And now we're going to go ahead and add our remaining two cups of milk. Again, I only add about a cup at a time. Maybe less than that. <laughs> it's hard for me to follow recipes. I try for you guys, but I really do just cook from my heart. And I roll with it. And make sure you taste it. Like, we're just not going to serve this just because it's the recipe. We're going to taste it and we're going to adjust it the way that you like it, the way that your family likes it. Just whisk that in. Make sure there's no lumps. There shouldn't be any lumps for you. If you do it little bits at a time, lumps should never be a problem for you. Especially if you keep everything super hot. Alright, and that is looking delicious okay I'm just gonna let that cook for a minute or so I'll grab my wooden spoon I'm probably gonna just let this slow cook on a simmer until I know it's nice and blended and hot before we go ahead and we add our last remaining ingredients that will make this our soup. Now if you want to at this point you can taste and adjust the, um, the seasonings. Mm, that's so good but for me it does need a little bit more salt not much maybe a half a teaspoon and I'm gonna give it another sprinkle of pepper Remember those potatoes kind of take a lot of that salt. <laughs> Ooh, that's delicious though. All right, I'm just gonna let that simmer for just a couple of minutes and then we'll throw in the remaining ingredients. Okay, so before we add our remaining ingredients, and you don't have to do this, I just do it. I always add just a little bit of fresh ground nutmeg in any cream dish I make. So if it's a cream soup, if it's mac and cheese, you don't have to add a whole lot, but the nutmeg really brings out the flavor in the dish. So let's get that stirred in. And then we'll go ahead and grab the rest of the ingredients. Okay, so this recipe calls for eight ounces of sour cream. What I did with mine is I measured the bowl on my kitchen scale. And, um, and then I weighed out about between nine and ten ounces. That way if I leave a little bit of residue in the bowl, I don't have to worry about it. So we're going to get that sour cream stirred in here. Grab your whisk. Make sure that's nice and blended. Okay. And then the next thing we're going to add is two cups of shredded cheddar cheese. Sorry. <laughs> and you're going to hear my 
ground beef going next to it. Normally, I would just serve this with a um, one of my crusty rolls. I'll leave a link to um, a video for the rolls that I would serve with this. But <laughs> it was a holiday weekend, and I'm trying to use up everything that I have in my fridge before it goes bad. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to serve this with loose hamburgers. And then any remaining ground beef that I have tomorrow will go in um, either a spaghetti or will go into chili. And that's how I will reuse that. So I go ahead and I stir this in until all that cheese is melted. And I always start with the, um, like the easier things to blend first and then the harder things. So next we're going to add in the green onions. So again, I'll leave the recipe down below for you. And I'm going to reserve some for garnish on top of everybody's bowl. Because presentation is everything. <laughs> When you serve somebody that you love a homemade dish that you poured your love into it, you want it to be, you want it to reflect the love that you put into it. So, um, you know, <laughs> even for the kids, I give them my prettiest dishes and I give them all the garnishes because those are the memories I want for them. <laughs> so, and then to this, we are going to add quite a bit of our, um, of our bacon and ham. We'll, we'll reserve some for a topping, but this really is the reason why I made this meal, <laughs> is to use up that ham. And of course I had bacon in there as well from morning breakfast. I'm gonna try to make sure I get all the big chunks of ham in here. And then I will reserve some of this for topping garnish. Remember, if you don't eat meat, skip this step and just serve the potato soup as is. And from here, like, honestly, you could add anything. <laughs> like, I would add some broccoli. I would add some cauliflower. I would add some celery. Um, I would probably add, um, maybe, I don't know. I'm trying to think what else. Um, scallion, not scallion, um, shallot. <gasps> shallot would be fantastic in this. So, it's your soup. You do whatever it is you want to do. I say the sky's the limit. And every time you make it, make it a little different. Try something new. Play with it. Pour your love into it. Pour your, your prayers that this nourishes the body of your loved ones. And that they, with every bite they take of it, they feel the love from you. It's a beautiful thing, you guys. It's an honor. It's an honor to make this. It's a privilege. And I'm, I'm very blessed. I'm very thankful and lucky. <laughs> All glory goes to God. Okay. This is ready to serve. So right now I just have it on simmer. I'm probably going to go ahead and put um, my lid on it loosely until my loose meat is ready. And... That's it. All right, I will bring you back when I serve okay. this. Mason is willing to taste this for us. So I'm going to get you a bowl here. Okay. okay. And to this, I'm gonna top, I won't put any green onion on the top for you, okay? Because <laughs> I know that's not your favorite. I'm gonna add some bacon on here for you because I know you love the bacon, right? Yes. 
Okay, here is your spoon. You give it a try. <laughs> Good? That's delicious. <laughs> So good. <laughs> would you highly recommend your mama's potato soup? You would? Oh, oh yes. you're such a sweet boy. Okay. With that, I'm going to let you guys go. I'm going to finish up dinner. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I hope this blesses you in some way. And if you give it a try, let me know um, if you don't already make it. So I'll leave the link down below to the uh, recipe. And um, I hope you and your family. Enjoy it. All right. Love you guys. See you soon.